Good morning, everybody. If you've been following me at all, you know I like to source my news sources locally whenever possible. So I'll be using my news source today as The Oregonian. Let's start out with their first article. Oregon's governor announces phased withdrawal of federal officers from Portland. That sounds like a down outright victory for the Oregon governor. But is it? You gotta go into the story to find out. So let's do that right now. Federal officers will start pulling out of Portland on Thursday in a phased approach and state troopers will arrive instead to back up officers from the Federal Protective Service to safeguard the Mark O. Hatfield Courthouse, Oregon's Governor Kate Brown announced. So what she's announcing is that instead of the federal government paying to protect its building, it's going to let the state do it. Good win, the good old Katie. You won one. Let's go on. Katie called the federal officers an occupying force that has refused accountability and brought strife to our community. Well, I'll get back to Katie's statement in a moment, citing the Oregonian. Let's now see what the feds say. Acting Homeland Security Secretary Chad F. Wolf, in a separate announcement, no surprise there, said he had been in talks with the governor in the last day and agreed to a joint plan to end the violent activity in Portland directed at federal properties and law enforcement. Whereas, Katie says, well, the feds brought strife. The feds are saying, hey, we'll just try and protect our property. <laughs> Let's find out who's right in just a few more moments. Yet, he tempered the statement by saying that federal law enforcement would remain in Portland until the violent activity toward our facility ends. We are not removing any law enforcement while our facilities and law enforcement remain under attack. <laughs> so, the Oregon State Police have to prove their mettle in protecting federal properties before the federal police will withdraw. Good win, Katie, like I said. Now Katie says that it was the feds that brought strife to her community. Do you think so? I don't think the Oregonian will agree. Let's go back in time using the Oregonian. This is July 19th. President of Portland Police Union targeted in protest says community has had enough. President of the Portland Police Union is saying is that the residents of Portland do not agree with these riots and destruction of property that has been going on. Let's go on just a little bit with this man's thoughts. Hours before what is expected to be the 53rd straight night of protests in the city, the head of the Portland's police union said the community has had enough. Portland Police Association President Daryl Turner, surrounded by 20 faith leaders, business owners, police officers, and neighborhood residents, held a news conference in front of the union's offices in North Portland. On Saturday, protesters broke in and lit a fire inside. Doesn't that make them rioters? The building itself was covered with graffiti. The elected officials have condoned the destruction and chaos, said Turner. They have placed their political agenda ahead, safety and welfare of the community. This must stop. Oh, all right, let's go back just a little bit more. Here we go. Here is the first 
time that the federal police have been mentioned in the Oregonian that I could find. Oregon will sue federal police agencies, open criminal investigation into use of force, and the picture is captioned 16th July, and the earliest reference I could find was not in the Oregonian, but somewhere else where it said that police, the federal police might have arrived as early as 14 July, but 16 July, like I said, so somewhere between 14 and 16 July, the Fed showed up. So this next article happens way before the Fed police show up. City details Portland protest, violence, damage, cost of repairs in response to motion to restrict tear gas, crowd control weapons. More than 100 fires have been lit so far. The estimated repair cost to public buildings is approaching 300000 That's of July 7, about at least one week or a week and a half before the Fed police arrived. And it says $4.8 in property damage to businesses. Let's go back a little bit farther. Here we see it again. Protest flare overnight in Northeast Portland. Property damaged police use tear gas. Sounds like riots to me, not protests. Here's the part I highlighted. Some protesters later rammed dumpsters into large garage doors on the precinct's west side and barricaded exit doors, police said. Sounds like they were trying to kill everybody inside that police station, doesn't it? Police said that by midnight, someone in the crowd started yelling over a bullhorn that they were going to burn the building down. Presumably, in reference to the precinct, officers notified the crowd about 1 a.m. Friday that an unlawful assembly had been declared. They started dispersing the crowd about 20 minutes later. Police said demonstrators fought with officers and shot them with paintball rounds. A mortar was launched onto the precinct's roof about 1.40 a.m., according to the police, who said who said they used unspecified crowd control mu munitions against demonstrators. And here's a picture of some of the damage they did. Broken glass, graffiti on walls, and here's another picture provided by the Portland Police of a store that has been, its windows broken out, and it has been looted, and you can see where people have taken boxes of, looks like shoes or something like that. And just once they took what they wanted, they just threw the empty boxes on the street. This isn't a protest. This is a riot. And as we all know, well before the federal police showed up, Portland had been rioting and looting and creating acts of arson. This is what the Portland mayor condones. This is what the governor condones. They want the feds out. They want their city. They want their state to burn. The Portland Police Union really has had its hands tied. It would love to crack down on these protesters, but it isn't being allowed to by its own mayor. So, good citizens of Portland, if you want to start fixing your city, you're going to have to do so at the ballot box in November.